I'm going to tie the uh, a mouse pattern that that I came up with, and I call it the Hantavirus. Um, it's uh, a pretty effective fly. Uh, probably the the great attributes of it is is that it's mostly synthetic, so it doesn't absorb any water. Um, I like to use a, a kind of a light wire um, partridge hook, uh, saltwater shrimp. Tie it in various sizes. Um, you can you can kind of match your hatch, if you will, uh, as far as colors and stuff go. Uh, the other material that I'll be using is uh, just a rubber bracelet material. Um, you can find this like at Walmart or something. Um, this is this is a pretty important feature in this pattern because um, one of the problems with a lot of mouse patterns is is the tail material has a tendency to, to wrap around the shank of the hook. And uh, that's what makes this material nice is because uh, it may get wrapped under there, but it'll kick itself back out. And so it's, it's very effective. Um, the other material that I'm gonna use is, uh, as the hair and the underbelly is a large crystal hackle. Um, in this particular case, I'm gonna be tying a brown mouse and then for the legs on it, I'm gonna use Magnum Predator Grizzly Bard Root Beer colored uh, rubber legs. Um, this is five millimeter foam. You can get it at a craft store or at your local fly shop if you're gonna tie a bunch of these. You know, I, I just buy it in big sheets, cut it with a fabric roller. Um, you know, I've kind of figured out over time the width that I need to have to make this pattern work. And uh, as I tie this fly, um, you know, I'll go through some of the little idiosyncrasies of, of, of creating this fly and to get your consistency. The other thing that I'm going to add at the very end is a little bit of uh, dyed chocolate browned arctic fox fur. And uh, it, it just adds a little bit more realism to, to, the, to the pattern. Uh, I like to use a, a flat wax nylon. Uh, thread when I tie this. Um, you know, there's probably smaller diameter threads that you can get out there, um, but what I like about this and uh, is that it's strong and it lays down flat when you wind it on. Um, you, you know, if you don't have much experience with it, you, you might have a little bit of problem getting some buildup of thread. So, um, you know, that's my only uh, warning, if you will. So, I'm going to place the hook in. First thing I'm going to add in is the tail. I run my thread, start it in the middle of the shank, and uh, run it to about the point of the hook. Then I'm going to tie in the tail material. And I just want to give this a stretch as I tie it in. And I'm going to want to check this. So I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this tail. Um, ordinarily, I, I run a long piece of this material. And uh, I just run it back through the spring, and, and it stays out of the way. Um, the next material that I'm going to, going to work with is this foam. And I make several cuts on this. And I wind up with a tapered point, and it's you know not absolutely critical that they be even, but it doesn't hurt. Um, leave kind of a square. You don't want necessarily a a, a sharp point here. Um, so I'm going to add this Loctite glue to the, to the shank of the hook and run my thread forward get it on there, and I'm gonna give myself a little bit of room behind the eye of this. If there's, a, if you're going to run into a problem tying this pattern, it's going to be crowding the eye. It might take you two or three flies to, to really learn the, the little tricks of, of not crowding that eye. And as I come back throughout the body winding this, I'm just making sure that my flat, that my thread stays flat. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check and make sure that I run this foam all the way back to where 
the tail material was tied in. Once I've done that and I can't see any thread where the, where the tail's tied in, I'll go ahead and give myself plenty of room. This stuff's fairly cheap when you buy it uh, at a craft store, so I don't mind having a little bit of waste there. The other thing is, is I'm going to use that excess to help build the, the head and use it as a handle. So I'm going to cross back over these wraps. So you should wind up with kind of a diamond appearance, if you will, across the back. I don't want to mash this down. I want, I want to leave that foam in there as much as possible because it'll, you know, in theory, it should help you uh, with your floatability. So I'm going to take some of this crystal hackle and I like the, the large because the, the nap on it is longer. It comes in, uh, comes in large and in small. Uh, I'm going to eventually wind up trimming quite a little of this off, but uh, if you use the small, you may not be able to fill that body out like you want to. So I tie it in, just catching it right at the back end. Um, in spite of this being a, a pretty good sized fly, I'm, I'm still trying to reduce the bulk of this. And I'm not going to get too wild with, with tightening that thread down because, like I said, I want to keep that, that air in that foam as much as possible. So when you wind this, this, this crystal hackle has the hackle on one side of the thread. So uh, you, can, you can do yourself a favor and line that up. And you don't have to make successive wraps. You can build this up and you can kind of... you. Can, kind of hop forward a little bit, but you just want to keep brushing and stroking those fibers back as you wind. Uh, that makes a nice smooth appearance on the belly of this fly. And again, you don't want to, you don't want to wind this all the way up to the eye because that's a, that's a potential crowding point. So once I have that there, I just trim that out and I'll go ahead and take a brush. You can use an old toothbrush or they sell uh, brushes, you know, fly shops and stuff like that. Just want to pick up all that nap that I can out of that. So once I've got that picked up and out of the way, I'll come in here and the next feature that I'm going to, going to make is the neck on this fly. So I've got this crystal hackle brushed out. I'm going to fan that all out. Um, and I want kind of a flat spot with, with no hackle running down the spine of this mouse. So I'm going to just put a line of Loctite glue right down the spine. And it doesn't take a lot of this. Um, but here's, here's the real trick of this pattern. Once you, once you have that lock tied in, you lift this foam up and you start stretching it. And you stretch it forward, check make sure that all that fiber is back and you just pinch that and hang on to it for a second. Gives that glue a chance to set into that foam a little bit. And if you notice, I just took two wraps there. I didn't get too carried away. I just let it kind of get settled in. And once it's, it's there, then I just mash this down between my thumb and forefinger, and it kind of flattens that back out on that, on that mouse. So I've, I've already got a couple wraps, and I'm going to check and see where I'm at up here. I want to make sure that I have plenty of room to finish this out. So I know that I can come forward a little bit and still not crowd anything. These are your safety wraps there. Now I can get part of that out of the way and I'll just snip it off. Come back through here and kind of fan that out. Roll it over on its belly and see if, if I like what I've done here, make sure that I didn't spill a bunch of glue by having too much excess on there and pinch it down. Um, <clears throat> one thing about the Loctite is, is as long as you 
don't touch it with your hands, it'll dry clear. If you touch it with your hands, the oils will cause it to turn white. So you have to be careful about that kind of stuff. Do, do I think it matters as far as catching a fish goes? Probably not so much, but if you're, if you're gonna try to sell this fly, you want it to have a nice, crisp, clean, professional appearance. So uh, the next thing that I need to do and is, is get some rubber legs on this. And these are the Magnum barred legs. Uh, I'm going to take a pair of them. And what's important here is, is that I'm going to double these back. And I'm going to make sure that they're, they're over, over length, if you will. They're going to stretch way back. I'm, I'm not worried about that. I'm going to trim those off later on when I finish this fly. I, I'd much rather have them short or long than short. Uh, you know, I'll make it, I'll make them fit into the perspective of this whole fly. So once those are tied in, you can see how long I've left those. When I finish this, I'll, I'll clean them up and get them trimmed down to size. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is come back forward here and get this get this thread moved to the to the throat area. I'm going to turn this completely over on its belly and take just a little dab of this uh, Arctic Fox. It doesn't take very much, um, and I'm just going to lay it lay it in there, and I'm just going to. Just let it find itself. Make sure that I don't pick up a leg and get a bunch of hair trapped underneath there. And if I like the looks of it, I'll just brush it back out of the way and tie it in. A couple little wraps behind it makes, it st makes that throat stand up just a little bit to where I can trim that off. And now I'll, I'll go ahead and tie that thread down. So once I've done that, the, the easiest way to do this is just take your, your Loctite glue and just put a line of glue right down your thread. Instead of taking the glue and, and possibly having a, a wreck by squeezing it in there, I'm just going to put a line of it on the thread and that way I can put it exactly where I want it. I'm going to come around like that, roll it back up get those legs pulled around where I want them. Takes a little adjustment in your vise sometimes to get this where you want it. Catch it with the whip finisher and brush everything back out of the way. Five or six wraps, suck it down. Just trace your thread right back up and don't make a snip, just run it in. So now this is the head needs to be cut, uh, so basically with the exception of the tail, I'm going to make this fly into thirds. You know, here's the back third, middle third, and so now here comes the head is, is the front third, and I'm going to come in back of, these, of this area from the neck, and I'm not going to try to make it come to a point. I want that to be kind of squared off. You know, so if you don't come out exactly even, you can come back in and reset that line. So you, do, you don't want it necessarily to be a point, just a little bit squared off. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about these legs. What, are we, what do we expect them to do? We want those to flutter and, and be pedaling, if you will. Because if you know anything about mice, they're not very good swimmers. Um, you know, they're not a baby muskrat. They're not a baby beaver. They're, you know, they're a land mammal. So even though they know how to swim, they're not strong swimmers. So <clears throat> what are we going to do with this, with this crystal hackle now that we have everything there? Um, a step that I would normally take uh, 
would be to trim this off before I put the legs on so I don't accidentally trim a leg off. But in this case, I'll just come in here and clean them up a little bit. When it's finished, what, I, what I'm looking for is, is for this crystal hackle material to all blend in and come back and form kind of a little V around this tail. So as this pattern is wet and you're looking at it from the underside, this comes back and takes away this hard edge of this foam. So it makes it a fine point, if you will, where the base of the tail would be. But that's the hantavirus. This video is brought to you by Fish USA, America's fly shop. Visit us today at fishusa.com.